Welcome to News at 10 with me, Brendan LePaul. The Malaysian Election Commission, EEC, has confirmed receiving an official notification from the Sarawak Chief Minister, Dato Patinggi Abang Johari Junoping, regarding the lifting of emergency in the state yesterday. Its secretary, Dato Iqmal Rudin Ishak, informed that this has been consented to by the Young Dipatuan Agong pursuant to subsection 2, subsection 1 of the Emergency Essential Powers Shrawa Ordinance 2021. Dato Iqmal Rudin, through his statement, also said under Section 3, Subsection 3 of the Emergency Essential Powers Shrawa Ordinance 2021, the State Legislative Assembly must be dissolved on the date of the lifting of emergency. Under Section 3, Subsection 4 of the same ordinance, it is required that a state election be held within 60 days of the dissolving. Therefore, the EC will hold a special meeting to determine the next course of action in implementing the said election. The Federal Territory's Islamic Religious Department, Jawi, has issued new rulings regarding the organizing of religious activities in Mos and Surau in Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya and Labuan, including the reduction of physical distancing between worshippers from 1.5 meters to 1 meter. Jawi Director Dr. Muhammad Ajib Ismail said the new rulings come into effect today after obtaining the consent of Young Dipatuan Agong Al Susan Abdullah, Riyatuddin Al Mustafa Bilasha. Dato Muhammad Ajib said apart from that, children aged over 12 and foreigners who were fully vaccinated would also be allowed to join the congregation in mosque and surau. Preschoolers and participants of Al-Quran recitation and Fardu Ain Kafa classes will also be allowed to attend sessions which are conducted in the mosques and surau premises based on the school management and operations guidelines. In a statement today, he said it is also permissible to organize social events such as religious feasts, festive celebrations, weddings, akika, and other social events at mosque halls, attended by fully vaccinated individuals at 50% of the hall capacity, with physical distancing observed. He said all the permissions given were subject to the set standard operating procedures, SOP, and in line with the advice of the Health Ministry and National Security Council, MKN. Parents and guardians are recommended to adhere to the appointment of the second dose vaccine appointments for teenagers. According to a statement by Deputy Health Minister Dr. Dr. Noor Azmi Ghazali, the Health Ministry has found that there were teenagers who did not attend their appointment as per schedule. Dr. Noor Azmi, who is also chairman of the COVID-19 Immunization Task Force Committee for Teenagers, also said the rate of vaccinations for the second dose in teenagers is projected to reach 80% on 11th November. However, based on the latest information on second dose appointment attendance, he said the target will most likely be achieved at late November or early December instead. He explained that parents or guardians who require a rescheduling of the second dose appointments may contact their school's administration to set a new date. Those who are unable to attend are urged to send an adult to represent their place to accompany the teenager for the appointment. Forms required for this purpose can be obtained at the children's school. Hindus are celebrating Deepavali in a lively atmosphere this year compared with last year as they now have the opportunity to return to their hometowns and villages to celebrate a meaningful day with family, relatives and friends. Clad in traditional colourful attire and yet they still adopt a new norms to cope the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic by adhering to the standard operating procedures SOPs set. Temples across the country are also taking precautionary measures by adopting the SOP set by the Ministry of Health, MOH. In Slango, a check at the Sri Maha Mariamman Devastadam Midlands Temple, Section 7, Shah Alam, found devotees queuing up and scanning attendance on the Mais Jatra application, as well as taking body temperature before entering the temple to pray. Temple officials said that today's ceremony went smoothly as devotees complied with the SOPs at the House of Worship, which is the new norm practiced by Malaysians since last year. 
In Johor, Hindus around Johor Bahru started visiting the Arul Migu Raja Mariamman Devastanam Temple in Jalan Ungu Puan, known as Johor Bahru Little India, as early as 7.30 a.m., wearing colourful traditional attire in conjunction with the Deepavali. The temple treasurer, as Murali, said that the management followed the SOP set by the MOH and only fully vaccinated visitors were allowed to enter. Uh, orang datang lebih dalam ikut SOP dia ikut masa uh -huh. sebab kita pun dah telah, telah beritahu dia orang ikut kalau boleh staggering time okay. uh, ikut masa yang tertentu so dalam atas lah ini lebih kurang dalam 100 hingga 150 orang uh -huh. itu saja dan tapi kapasiti kita 400 orang uh -huh. so kita pun telah memaklumkan kepada uh, uh, apa ni uh, penganut datang lebih kurang uh, masa yang tertentu saja he added people start visiting the temple from 6 a.m., but only 50 people were allowed to enter at any one time. Hindus celebrate the Festival of Lights with joy this year compared with last year. Meanwhile, in Pahang, Menteri Besar Datu Sri Wan Rosdi Wan Ismail opined that Deepavali this year, even celebrated in moderate level, continues to display the true spirit of Keluarga Malaysia. Dapati uh, jelas menunjukkan bahawa uh, perpaduan kaum Sesama kita aa, nampak begitu segar sekali, semangat muhibahnya begitu tinggi dan hari ini dalam masa yang sama kita ada aa, berikan sedikit bantuan kepada mereka yang aa, tidak menasib baik. Jadi saya menyeru kepada semua rakyat aa, Pahang khasnya dan juga Malaysia supaya kita terus semarakkan aa, perpaduan kaum sesama kita, kita tingkatkan semangat muhibah kerana perpaduan itu sangat penting demi keharmonian. He was met after attending a Deepavali celebration held at the residence of Dato Jasvir Singh Ram Singh, the Pahang Menteri Bursa Special Officer for Sikh Community Affairs in Bentong, Pahang. Please foil tires smuggling a tan from Singapore. Stay tuned. But first, Minister and the Prime Minister's Department for Religious Affairs, Idris Ahmad, call upon religious agencies to search and distribute aid to individuals affected by the COVID-19 pandemic without waiting for applications. He informed that almost 17 million ringgit in funds have been distributed by agencies for the benefit of over 261,000 recipients nationwide throughout September and October. Walaupun kita tak dapat selesaikan semua masalah mereka, sekurang-kurang kita dapat meringankan ha, apa yang dialami oleh mereka. Saya telah arahkan 14 agensi saya, saya nak hari ini bukan mereka yang datang jumpa kita. Kita yang mesti pergi cari mereka. Kerana kita faham, mereka dah lalu susah. Apa mereka datang cari kita, terpaksa mereka tinggalkan kerja harian mereka yang kais pagi makan pagi. Yang keduanya, mereka terpaksa membelanja kos transport dan sebagainya. Meanwhile, he urged all religious agencies to implement a total of 208 programs as planned to improve Muslims' quality of life nationwide. On another development, Idris said local authorities, PBT, have the power to enforce the ban on the sale of alcoholic beverages to Muslims in the country. He added the ban could be enforced at the discretion of PBTs and council members as they have the power to impose the rule among Muslims in their respective areas. He said previously the Kuala Lumpur City Hall, DBKL, also imposed regulations to tighten the sale of liquor, especially to Muslims. Macam DBKL pun diubah peraturan-peraturan seperti begitu. Khasnya untuk apa nekat lah, gejala-gejala terutama di kalangan orang Islam. Itu tu pulang kepada ahli majlis menualih itu untuk menggunakan sekatan terhadap apa penjualan arak itu. He said this at a press conference after presenting the Musa Ada flood assistance at the Sungai Kerang Public Hall near Terong Perak today. A total of 127 people received the aid, involving 79 recipients in Terong and 48 recipients in Sungai Kerang. 
Idris was commenting on a statement issued by Salama Assemblyman Muhammad Akmal Kamaruddin and Salama District Council MDS in Para, which did not allow the sale of liquor at retail outlets starting next year. Muhammad Akmal was reported to have said that the matter had been decided by MDS as the local administrative body. Past President Datu Sri Abdul Hadi Awang and his deputy Datu Sri Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man maintained their posts after winning uncontested in the 67 past annual General Assembly for the 2021 to 2023 term. Past Secretary General Datu Sri Takiyuddin Hassan said both leaders were unopposed during the election. As for the Vice President post, four candidates would contest in the elections. Dalam uh, muktamar ini juga ditetapkan dalam perlembagaan PAS kita memilih 18 orang ahli jatang kuasa kerja PAS Pusat dan kita menerima pencalonan yang disahkan seramai 36 orang 36 orang akan uh, bertanding untuk uh, mengisi 18 uh, kedudukan dalam ahli jatang kuasa kerja PAS Pusat yeah. The 67th Pas Muktama will be held on Saturday and Sunday in a hybrid format that involves the physical attendance of 694 delegates, while 852 delegates would be attending the assembly virtually. State delegates will be in their respective states, except for those from Trungganu, Klantan and Pahang, while all 197 Pas area presidents will be attending physically. The Perak state government will try its best to resolve the issue with the appointment system at the State Land and Mines Department, PTG, where dispatch riders and lawyers were forced to queue up at odd hours. Menteri Besar Datuk Sarani Mohamad said the state had already held discussions with the riders and lawyers to find an amicable solution. It was reported that dispatch riders and lawyers in Para had to wait between 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. almost daily at the Land and Mines office to get appointment numbers. The booking system implemented earlier this month only accepts 300 documents daily. Ia ni bermula apabila kita terpaksa mengurangkan kehadiran staff PTG akibat PKP. Kemudian bila kita dengar ada rungutan, kita tambah sedikit bilangan mereka hadir and dan kena pula positif termasuk pengarah PTG pun positif COVID hari itu. Jadi itu semua adalah menyebabkan berlakunya tunggakan-tunggakan kerja itu. Dato' Sarani said this after a Deepawali visit to S. Kamala Nathan, 63, the driver to former Menteri Besar Tan Sri Tajul Rosli at his residence in Desa Sriwang Lahat, Ipoh. Dato' Sarani also made a cash contribution to Kamala Nathan during the visit. In other news, Proton's cumulative sales stands at 86,379 cars for the first 10 months of this year. This was a 1.6% improvement over sales from the first 10 months of 2020, with 13,362 cars sold in October 2021. Proton said the achievement means the company has outperformed the total industry volume TIV for the Malaysian automotive market, which has fallen by an estimated 4.7%. Proton's saga continues to lead the way in sales achievement with 5,107 cars sold in October, marking the third time the model has breached the 5,000 unit barrier this year. The two other volume leaders for the company are its sports utility vehicles, SUVs, the Proton X50 and Proton X70. Proton Era Chief Executive Officer Roslan Abdullah said Proton sales in October can be summarized as a story of strong buyer demand and unrealized sales potential. He also said demand is expected to remain high even into the year end, despite shortages in components. The recent Budget 2022 announcement of sales and service tax SST exemptions for the car industry would be extended to 30 June next year. Proton brought a cheer not only from industry players, but also customers. The extension will also help to spur sales through the first half of next year, when there could be more new models introduced to the market. 
Now, the Region 2 Marine Police Force, PPM, seized 727 tyres of various types, with more than 690,000 ringgit believed to have been smuggled into the country from Singapore at the Kempas Toll Plaza last week. Johor Police Chief Datuk Bayohan Maidin Piche said the tyres were seized from a suspicious-looking lorry after it left the Customs Immigration and Quarantine CIQ complex at the Sultan Iskandar building at 5.35pm last 28 October. The lorry driver, a local, aged 28, was detained for questioning. Briefing reporters today, he said following the seizure, police arrested another suspect, a local man, aged 28, in Taman Sri Skudai the following day to facilitate investigation. Kita sedang uh, berkolaborasi rapat dengan pihak kastam untuk melihat di manakah ada uh, kekurangan ataupun uh, ketirisan Kalau kita lihat daripada soal siasat awal kita ke atas pemandu lori ini, dia memang ada SS card. Lori ini bila diisiharkan masuk ke Singapura, kosong. Bila keluar pun diisiharkan kosong. The lorry driver was remanded for seven days, starting from 29th October until the 4th of November. While the second suspect was remanded for two days, from 30th until 31st October, and the case is being investigated under Section 135, Subsection 1, Subsection D of the Customs Act 1967. Ask if there was a possibility of insiders from the CIQ being involved in the syndicate, Dr. Ayub Han responded by saying that the matter was still under investigation. One of the sectors that has been highlighted by the government with 20 million ringgit designated for the development of national e-sports sector in budget 2000 peak potential given its high commercial value, as well as serving as a medium in generating income among the youth. Therefore, special effort is needed to ensure e-sports receive a positive exposure among Sir Erwin Zayed has a story. The founder of Homeboys Production, Noredi Norsal, said national esports require a ranking system to showcase the performance of our local athletes in their respective categories. Aside that, the establishment of National Esports League also plays a major role in further empowering the sport, thus projecting positive image among Malaysians. Game yang kita sepatutnya ada ranking system Sebab daripada ranking system ni lah Player-player uh, tu sendiri dapat dapat tunjukkan bakat Dapat mungkin kat situ Kita as a, as a private company Nama-nama apa semua Tapi ranking system tu yang buatkan kita boleh tahu Siapa yang tengah main Local player will also give a good impact In national e-spawn from streaming Merchandise and productions Senior lecturer of Faculty of Bios from University Technology Malaysia UTM, Dr. Hadafi Fitri Muhammad Latif said, is that will generate the economy as well as Malaysian's income. Antara mereka memerlukan investor cendais, memerlukan dan, dan dan paling menarik kalau kita lihat dalam pertandingan esports hadiah yang dipik ia menunjukkan bernilai. Undoubtedly, the high commercial value makes e and perceive eSport as one of the Start to the Champions League with a 2-0 win over Atletico Madrid at Anfield at 16. Jota put the home side ahead in the 13 minutes, nodding home at the back post. Spanish side's troubles intensified after Felipe was sent off in the 36 minute red. Diego Simeone still dominated possession and saw... First place Liverpool are on 12 of 16, having won four games in thirds with four points behind Porto. Draw with bottom side AC Milan. Uh Moving on to tennis, considered Carlos Alcaraz, South ATP 1000 Paris Masters, who came into the tournament of a semi final run at last week's Erste Bank Open in Vienna. That reaped dividends with a strong. Sinner twice recovered three break points in the second set at one all and two off, having come up with the big serve five all, 15-40, when the Italian struck a forehand into the net. Alcaraz, who had beaten Sinner 6-2, 3-6, 6-3, as an unranked 15-year-old, touched out his 27th match win of the. And that's all for today's edition of News at 10 in our top story today in Almond. Don't forget to catch up to the updates at noon tomorrow at 2 and Solar and Berita RTM. And I'm Brandon Paul representing the English News Desk, which is Ali celebration. Till then, thank you for watching. Take care.